Security Advisor Michael Flynn is planning to invoke his Fifth Amendment right in response to a subpoena from the Senate Intelligence Committee, according to a source close to Flynn. We should note that his response is expected to say that he's invoking his constitutional rights and is not an admission of guilt. Now, we've just received a letter uh, from uh, uh, Michael Flynn's lawyer, which uh, I've handed over to Alan Dershowitz, my, uh, my counsel for this segment, uh, to take a look at, where, in which I think he has invoked his fifth, or they have said on he his has. behalf yes. that this is yes. done. So this is now a done deal. Uh, let me just read this last, uh, this, it's not the last paragraph, it's many pages of a letter, but it says here, our client's position remains unchanged. Producing documents that fall within the as broad scope would be a testimonial act insofar as it would confirm or deny the existence of such documents. He's absolutely right, and Flynn has a terrific lawyer. Uh, but the law is this, that if you give him what's called production immunity, that is, the court can never or the government can never use the fact that he produced it mm -hmm. in evidence, but they could use the actual document right. in evidence. In other words, you have no Fifth Amendment right to the content of a document because you've already written it. Mm -hmm. But you do have a Fifth Amendment right if they say to produce not be the, the document, to produce it. you don't have to produce it. So if they give you right. production immunity, right. you then have to produce it. Uh, Michael uh, German is with us now. He's a former FBI special agent and a professor at the NYU School of Law. Tell me how this all refers to, uh, relates to the fact that there is an investigation going on. Clearly the FBI has one. James Comey said this, and the fact that he's gone doesn't stop that investigation. And now we have a special counsel, former head of the FBI, right. who's going to pick up on that work. And I don't know whether they're, are they going to work in parallel? Are there going to be two different investigations going on, or is Bob Mueller going to use the information that, that uh, Comey's FBI has gathered so far? Normally what happens is the same FBI agents who have been working on this for the last year will continue working on it under the authority of Robert Mueller, special counsel. Uh, in this case, there might be a lot of spin-off cases or unrelated or narrowly related right. cases that, that are going to be continued to work through the FBI's normal U.S. attorney route. Talk to me about, I get, you know, it's hard to sort of separate this, the non-legal folks here, uh, when we're talking about the fact that Roger Stone and Paul Manafort uh, have turned over documents to this committee. They're not subpoenaing the people themselves, they're subpoenaing documents. Uh, is the Senate Intelligence Committee likely to get farther down this road than either the FBI or, or Bob Mueller? They're going to have a tremendous clash because the congressional committees want information, they want it out in the public. The way to get information and to have it out in the public is to give the witnesses immunity if they plead the fifth. Mueller doesn't want them to get immunity. That's what happened with Oliver North. Mm -hmm. And they lost their case with Oliver North. So we're going to have real conflicts between what the congressional investigating committees want in public right. and what Bob Mueller wants in secret. So that's a problem and I, I don't know how many times in the FBI they experience this where there's a, a case that the, the FBI is prosecuting or investigating and on the side there's a political sideshow uh, that has some a real head of steam. Uh, so I worked in this during the savings and loan a failure. Good example. Era, All right. Where where that was a, a big part of of the issue. I mean, it's a negotiation. It it, it takes the, mm -hmm. the members of Congress working with the special counsel of the FBI to ensure that they're on mm -hmm. parallel paths. And to be clear here, I think a lot of of what we have to keep in mind is putting people in jail is not necessarily the best outcome right. here. <laughs> you know, this is a, a, a real political issue that needs to get resolved as quickly as it can. And I think that's right. And the special counsel only has jurisdiction over criminal matters. And a lot of the most serious accusations against are not, Donald Trump are not, Trump are not necessarily criminal. criminal. For example, what he said to the Russians, he can declassify right. firing Comey. He's in charge of the FBI under the unitary executive. He could literally have told the FBI who to investigate, who not to. We don't do that anymore, but that's a matter of an internal Justice Department rule, not a reconstruction of a criminal statute. You can't create crime out of conduct that you disagree with. The, the criminalization of political differences mm -hmm. is something that is very dangerous in democracy. So do you believe that in keeping these investigations separate, the House Intel Committee and the House Judiciary Committee, uh, I'm sorry, the Senate Intel Committee and the Senate Judiciary Committee can achieve uh, investigation into the political side of things, whether they think the government's running properly versus
special counsel, uh, which can look into the criminality of it. As you said, it's going to take a sophisticated negotiation, and sometimes it breaks down. It broke down in the Olive North case. It broke down in some of the other cases, but sometimes it works well. Mm -hmm. And yet there's a third possibility. There are still people pushing for a congressionally authorized independent commission, like the 9-11 commission. Right. They would have complete power. They would be nonpartisan, as distinguished from bipartisan, which is what happens in Congress and the House. And so this is still a work in progress. Progress. Casey Hunts, uh, at Capitol Hill for us. Uh, Casey, I don't know if you had a chance to <clears throat> look at this letter from uh, Michael Flynn's attorneys, uh, written to Richard Burr and Mark Warner, the uh, the, uh, the the heads of the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, what do you make of it? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you talked, uh, touched on this a little bit earlier, uh, Allie, but I think uh, the key part of it is here where his attorney writes that producing documents that fall within the subpoena's broad scope, they say, would be a testimonial act insofar as it would confirm or deny the existence of these documents. Now, remember, what the committee asked for was not for testimony from Flynn himself, uh, but rather for information uh, related to meetings and communications that he may have had with Russia. Russian officials and any communications he had with the Trump campaign uh, on this topic. So it's an interesting way uh, of framing this, essentially saying, look, if we gave you information about these things, that could potentially incriminate uh, our client, in this case, the former National mm -hmm. Security Advisor Michael Flynn. So, of course, it does say uh, what we had expected based on sources close to Flynn, uh, that they are going to uh, invoke the, the Fifth Amendment here and not provide uh, this information. They also emphasize that the Supreme Court has said uh, that this, uh, the Fifth Amendment is designed to protect innocent mm -hmm. people uh, and that this, of course, does not uh, imply guilt. Yeah, so, and, and, and uh, we should always underscore that. Uh, Mike German, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fact. It, 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 we have come to th probably from a lot of TV and movies mm -hmm. that when you plead the fifth, you're hiding something. Uh, but in fact, the Constitution protection of the Fifth Amendment is not for guilty people. It's, it's right. just as well. I guess it, it can it, be used by guilt for guilty it, people. It just means you have a good lawyer and, and, and that person's giving you good advice. But in our partisan world that we live in, when a Democrat pleads the fifth, the Republicans say that's proof of guilt. When the Democrat pleads the fifth, you know, that's the way it works in America. Nobody cares about civil liberties. Nobody cares about principles. Everybody's a partisan. You know, when I speak up on behalf of constitutional rights, people say, oh, you're taking Trump's side. Oh, you're taking Clinton's side. I'm taking the side of the Constitution. Let the chips fall where they may. I'm always going to defend constitutional rights and civil liberties. Alan, good to see you.